Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss how to apply k-means clustering algorithm on the given data set so that we can divide them into different clusters. In this case, we have been given the following data points. There are nine data points are given to us. They are of one dimensional in this case. We need to use Euclidean distance to calculate the distance between the data points and the centroids here. The initial centroids are also given. The first one is M1 is equal to 4 and M2 is equal to 11 in this case. So given this data, we need to apply the k-means clustering algorithm and we need to divide this one dimensional data points into two clusters here. Now this is how uh, I will represent the data. These are the data points given to us. We have to calculate the distance from the data points to these two cluster centroids that is M1 and M2 and then we need to assign the cluster here. As said earlier, we have been given uh, the two centroids. The first one is uh, 4 and second one is 11 in this case. Now what we need to do is uh, we need to calculate the distance from data points to these uh, centroids. Uh, we need to use Euclidean distance to calculate the distance here. The Euclidean distance formula is equal to uh, if we have uh, two data points that is x2 and uh, x1, the distance between x2 x1 is equal to square root of x2 minus x1 bracket square in this case. Now we will try to calculate the distances here. In the first case, uh, x2 is equal to 4 and uh, x1 is equal to 2. Uh, that is nothing but the square root of uh, 4 minus 2 bracket square here. 4 minus 2 bracket square is equal to uh, 4. Square root of 4 is equal to 2 in this case. So that is what we will get here. In the second case, again x2 will remain same. That is 4. And x1 will become what? 4 here. So square root of 4 minus 4 bracket square which is equal to 0 here. In the next time, x2 will be 4 and x1 is equal to 10 here. That is square root of 4 minus 10 bracket square, which is equal to 6 here. Similarly, we have to calculate all other distances in this case. Now, we will calculate the distance from these data points to M2 here. That is M2 is equal to 11 in this case. That is nothing but square root of 11 minus 2 bracket square, which is equal to 9 in this case. Similarly, we will calculate all other distances here. Now, once you calculate the distances from data points to initial centroids, uh, we need to check which is the minimum for each and every data point. Now, if you consider data point 2, the distances are 2 and 9 here. Between 2 and 9, 2 is the minimum here. This is with respect to what? M1 here. The meaning of this one is the data point 2 will be assigned to cluster 1 here. Similarly, for data point 4, the distances are 0 and 7 here. 0 is minimum, which is with respect to the M1. Again, it is assigned to C1 here. The same thing is with respect to the third data point, that is 10. The 6 and 1 are the distances. 1 is with respect to M2 here. So, it is assigned to cluster 2 in this case. Similarly, we have to assign each and every data point to one of the cluster here. Now, once you do this thing, uh, you can see here, uh, the data point 2, 4 and 3 were assigned to C1 in this case. So, these are the three data points present in C1. Remaining all data points are present in C2 here. Now, once you get the new clusters here, we need to calculate the new centroids here. To calculate the new centroid, we have to add all data points divided by the number of data points in that cluster. So, in this case, 2 plus 4 plus 3, that is equal to 9. 9 divided by 3 is equal to 3 here. Similarly, we have to add all these data points divided by 6, you will get 18 in this case. The new centroids are 3 and 18. With respect to initial centroids, these are the clusters. And with respect to new centroids, we need to calculate the new cluster assignments here. So, these new centroids will become the current uh, centroids over here. Now, once you get the, uh, these uh, new centroids, what we need to do is, again, we need to calculate the distance from these data points to these uh, new centroids here. So, that is what I have done in this case. I have calculated the distance from the data points to M1. These are the distances. Next, I have calculated the distance from these data points to M2. These are the distances here. Once you get the new distances, again, we need to assign these data points to one of the cluster based on the distances. Again, if you look at uh, this uh, data point 2, 1 and 16 are the distances. 1 is minimum. It is with respect to, to M1 here. So, it will be assigned to C1 in this case. Similarly, you, you can notice here, uh, data point 10, the distances are 7 and 8 here. Between these two, 7 is minimum. So, it is assigned to C1 here. Similarly, I have done the remaining assignments here. Now we need to compare the previous cluster assignment and the new cluster assignments. If there is no variations, we have to stop here. If there is a variation between the cluster assignments, again we need to calculate the new centroids and then we have to repeat the same process over here. Now if you look at here, the data point 10 was present in cluster 2 initially. Now it is present in C1. 
the meaning is the data point pen has moved from cluster 2 to cluster 1 here so because of that we will get the new clusters here the c1 is having four data points that is 2 4 10 and 3 c2 is having the remaining data points here now we need to calculate the centroids here the centroid is nothing but addition of all the numbers in the cluster divided by the total number of uh, uh, points in that cluster in this case m1 will become 4.75 and m2 will become 19.6 here for the next iteration these new cluster assignments will become the current uh, cluster assignments so we need to move these uh, new cluster assignments to the current cluster assignments we can notice here i have copied these cluster assignments into the current cluster assignments here once you get these new centroids again we need to calculate the distance from the data points to these uh, new centroids here these are the distances once you get the distances again we need to assign the data points uh, uh, to one of the clusters based on the minimum distance here now once you assign these data points to new clusters the cluster assignment looks something like this now if you look at these uh, cluster assignment carefully the data point 12 was present in c2 initially now it has moved to c1 in this case similarly data point 11 previously it was present in c2 now it has moved to c1 here the meaning of this one is uh, the two data points have moved from one cluster to other cluster again we need to calculate the uh, the new centroids in this case so new centroids are the again the same process we need to add all data points divided by the number of data points here for m1 we will get 7 for m2 we will get 25 here before we move on to the new iteration we have to copy these new cluster assignments into current cluster assignments they will become the current cluster assignments again uh, with the help of uh, the new centroids we need to assign these data points to the new clusters there so that is the reason i have moved these uh, new cluster assignments to current cluster assignments you can notice it over here again uh, once you get the new uh, centroids here we need to calculate the distances uh, from the data points to these uh, cluster centroids here uh, we will get the distances something like this again once you get the distances we have to assign these data points to one of the cluster here uh, if you notice the cluster assignment the previous cluster assignment and the current as cluster assignment there is no change the meaning of this one is none of these data points have moved from one cluster to other cluster the meaning of this one is the clusters have converged here there is no need to do the further uh, iterations because these are the final clusters in this case so the final clusters are c1 is equal to 2 4 10 11 12 and 3 here and c2 is equal to 20 30 and 25 here so in this uh, video i have discussed uh, how can we divide the given data points into different clusters with the help of uh, k means clustering algorithm using euclidean distance I hope the concept is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.